We can get inside. It's a TARDIS. The monk's got a TARDIS. You just caught me watching Time Meddler. You know, it's... Before 1965, before this story aired, Doctor Who never really did anything like that story. Uh, because Doctor Who was an educational show. It relied on you know, telling stories from history, and it also relied on telling sci-fi stories. But let's talk about history. Um, you've got stuff about Ancient Rome, the French Revolution, Aztec society. You know, th those stories are pretty interesting and, you know, taught people about those events and they were also interesting stories in their own right. The Time Meddler. The Time Meddler is different because it sets itself up as being about the Norman invasion of England in 1066, but actually, it ended up being about this Time Lord. Uh, we didn't know they were called Time Lords at that point, but someone of the Doctor's race um, trying to meddle with history to make sure that the, um, well, that Norman invasion didn't happen. But this seemed to come at a price. The more they showed Daleks in Victorian times, for example, the less they showed stuff like pirate smugglers or or deadly massacres, or, heck, even gunfights at the OK Corral, but that led them to axe this formula eventually, with the Highlanders being the last one. But in this video, I shall explain why that is, how this is negatively impacting the show today, and also how I feel it should be tackled, you know, how you should how to improve the show at its current point by making everything appear historical. So, um, roll the intro. So, why are the BBC so scared to make a pure historical? Well, as I said in the opening, basically, there was a loss of interest uh, from the viewers in the 60s. So in their place, the show just did the Monster of the Week format. So they did try to make a pure historical again in 1982, um, in the season 19 story Black Orchid, which is a nice little story, However, that was the last pure historical we've had, and the reason why I probably didn't make another one in the entirety of the classic run is due to a lack, a lack of interest again, and that would probably be because The Visitation was the last story before Black Orchid, and that was a pseudo-historical with a more interesting premise. Visitation was set during the Black Death, an actual event, and um, Black, Black Orchid is based on a botany book from the 1920s. I mean, it's not really that interesting. So this probably clouded the BBC's judgement, as it probably made them think that no one would ever want to see this ever again. When really, the problem with the pure historical wasn't the fact that it was a pure historical. The problem with it is that they weren't giving it an interesting story. So yeah, that was made worse by the pseudo-historical being right next to it, so people were like, ooh, let's make more pseudo-historicals. So when it came time for Russell T. Davies to bring back the show, he brought back many iconic elements. The monsters, the sci-fi stories, heck, even stories set in the past with the Unquiet Dead, Charles Dickens with Alien Ghosts, the Shakespeare Code, William Shakespeare with Alien Witches, the Unicorn and the Wasp, Agatha Christie with an alien wasp. All these stories are delightful in their own way, but as you can see, there are no pure historicals here. And there has still been none ever since. So why is this? Why haven't the Revival-era showrunners 
don't appear historical yet. Well, it's sort of circular reasoning. Since the show hasn't made a pure historical regularly since the Highlanders back in the 1960s, that made the show do more sci-fi stuff. Uh, and seeing as how the show did more sci-fi stuff, that made people think, oh, that's what it, the show is about. So they didn't go back to the, the historical formula. Um, so, but because they haven't gone back to the historical formula, they continue to do sci-fi, and that creates a vicious cycle. So that's why the show is always about monsters, even if they do travel back in time. If the BBC are scared that a pure historical won't work in the 21st century, they should just turn to Big Finish, as they've got plenty of examples of pure historicals that do work. The Marion Conspiracy is a brilliant celebrity historical portraying Mary I of England as someone who did what she did to protect her people, even if she did it the complete wrong way by burning Protestants at the stake. Other Lives isn't even about any event in history. Well, it has a great exhibition as a backdrop, but it's mainly about the Doctor being mistaken for someone's husband, Charlie having to pose as Madame de Roche, and Cariz being imprisoned as part of his freak show. Those may be from, like, a decade or two ago, but a more recent example would be the Peterloo Massacre, about the tragedy of the same name. I haven't listened to it myself, but it's highly acclaimed across the board. So that just proves pure historicals can work in the 21st century. So it doesn't have to just be about monsters. However, I am going to say something that will shock you. Yes, Doctor Who is actually about the monsters in my opinion, but not in the way you might think. Because you see, you do have like the Monster of the Week, you've got your Slovene, Absorbaloff, don't know why those came to mind first, but you know, you've got those, you've got your Daleks, your Cybermen, you know, you've got your Monster of the Week. And, you know, that's fine, those are monsters, but I personally think the more interesting villains, the more enjoyable villains, the villains that make the story better, are the ones that basically hold a mirror up to us. I'll explain what I mean. So basically, there are either people themselves, uh, as they are in pure historicals, or they have the worst parts of our human condition, and basically they're projected onto these aliens. So for example, the Daleks are literal Nazis, so <laughs> basically they take the fascist ideologies which are extremely bad and, you know, apply them to pepperbots. Now, historicals and pure historicals actually do this as well, but it's easier for them because you can actually show evil humans in the form of evil humans. For example, the Aztecs has human sacrifice and Rosa has racism. This is where I'd like to talk about the modern historicals, let's say from 2010 onward. I'm not going to talk about ones of big name villains, so Victory of the Daleks, I'm not going to talk about that. Most historicals in modern times actually just use the past setting as their backdrop, which is completely fine in my opinion. You can have a story that just so happens to be set in Venice uh, back in the hundreds of years ago period uh, in Vampires of Venice. The whole pirate stuff for Curse of the Black Spot, Victorian London, or an equivalent for most stories set in the past in the Moffat era. They are, as I said, harmless because they don't use any major historical events to try and boost up its narrative. However, sometimes you do get stories that are set in actual past events. In my opinion, these do need to be taken care of because if you don't, then you might have a story where you're wasting the potential of the actual event itself. I think Series 6, the opening to Series 6, the um, Impossible Astronaut Day of the Moon, that actually did the right sort of thing, because there wasn't actually much you could do with the moon landing, unless you actually did add sci-fi to it. Also, what else could you really do? With, the, with actually being in Nazi Germany. Um, 
other than sci-fi. I don't agree with what the episode did, but as the main concept of going back in time uh, and possibly trying to kill Hitler before he did all these atrocities, that could work. Um, but no, it had to be a River Song origin story. But there are historical events you could theoretically do stuff with. For example, the Cold War, which it could be a Bond-esque, like, espionage tale. Uh, it's like, it could be like Enemy of the World, except set in history, and that's actually quite an intriguing concept. Or you could just throw everything away by having a Martian in a submarine. There's also another approach to historicals, and that is solving a historical mystery. Like in the, the Eaters of Light, I bet you forgot that episode existed, but the Eaters of Light, that basically tried to solve the mystery of what happened to the, the Ninth Legion of the Roman Army when it tried to invade Scotland. When this formula is applied, I don't actually mind it when sci-fi is involved either, because Really, if it's so mysterious as to what happened, you could pump in sci-fi, and that's that's actually a clever formula, and that's one that Doctor Who can really excel at, and that is smart. And finally, I shall talk about the celebrity historical. If you don't count Robots of Sherwood, we haven't really had one since Vincent and the Doctor. Now, in Ben's review of The Witchfinders, he commented on the fact that people, including myself, weren't happy with the story because it was marketed as a pure historical, uh, but ended up not at all, even though it really should have been. He said the same was true for Vincent and the Doctor as well. Um, and yeah, he's right in all but one aspect. He's right that it was marketed as a pure historical, but in fact was a pseudo-historical. And it would still have made for a good story, if it was a pure historical. Yes, the alien menace in both were allegories from the main subjects of the plot, but as I said earlier, monsters act as a mirror for stuff that happens in our society or the evils of humanity. Now, we don't have witch trials nowadays, do we? So the best thing the witch finders does in terms of an, uh, like, in terms of that sort of mirror effect is saying bullying is wrong. Yeah, that's what the Doctor stands for. We don't exactly need many bullying allegories. I feel like the Morax didn't work as an allegory, uh, because it's because of this. It would have been better if the episode was about the witch trials in the same way the Aztecs was about human sacrifice. Because we all know it's wrong, but no, alien mud is more interesting than witch trials, apparently. So if it didn't work with the witch finders, why did it work for Vincent and the Doctor? Simple. The one key difference between the two. One's about an historical event, the other's about an individual. The witch trials were interesting enough on their own to make a full-fledged plot out of it, and it didn't need an alien allegory to convey any sort of message. Because it is easy enough to, like, convey the message of this stuff was bad just by showing it in history. And one could argue Vincent and the Doctor does not need this either. However, the story's subject matter is enhanced by the alien's presence, in my opinion. And note how I said alien and not monster because the Corpheus isn't the real monster in Vincent and the Doctor. The real monster is depression. Depression isn't something that should be taken lightly at all. The episode showcases that even when Amy thought she gave Vincent a reason to live, it, it, he still killed himself. To ad lib Stu Bagful in his uh, video where he was talking about that subject, depression's like an invisible monster that you're not sure how to defeat. Heck, if it, even if it was an invisible monster, you would still know Invisible monsters are still easier to, like, defeat because they're still tangible. They still... that you can st they still can be physically interacted with. They... you just can't see it. Depression's not like that. Now you know why the Corpheus was there! I guess the point I'm trying to make with this video is that... Doctor Who historical stories... Historical stories, 
certain within Doctor Who shouldn't have aliens unless they enhance the plot in any sort of capacity. Because it's not pseudo-historicals that are the problem, it's the application of said aliens within the historical. This is where series 11 comes into the picture. Now, I stand by my opinion that Demons of the Punjab did not need the Thajarians. If you take them out, what changes? Nothing. Now, some people have told me that the aliens were actually necessary for Demons of the Punjab, because otherwise it would have been too obvious that Manish would have actually killed Prem. But really, I don't think it would have, and even if it would have, it just shows how bad the partition really was. It doesn't make for effective drama, but oh well. I don't necessarily think it would have, because if they wrote it in a way that showed that, yeah, they still really love each other, um, then it would have been predictable. But because Manish would have had those undertones of um, being pro-partition, you could have seen it coming, but if you didn't, that's fine, it's a dramatic reveal. But as soon as the Thajarians were revealed to be peaceful, I personally was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the brother, it's the brother. If you remove the Thajarians, then the episode would be more about the partition and how it affects everyday people, which I was more invested in. Uh, also, if you didn't spend so much time having the aliens because Doctor Who needs aliens, then you could have given Yaz more character development because Yaz needs more character development and this was her episode. She was given a little, but like, that's the most she was given this season and it's not enough. It's, it's despicable. If you want more of my opinions on Demons of the Punjab, you can check out my review here. Back to the Witchfinders, uh, yeah, it would have been better off without the alien mud. But that really shows Doctor Who is actually scared of doing a pure historical. Yes, the mud infected Becca, and what Becca did was a nice parallel to witch hunting as a whole. But I do have to admit that, because it was a nice parallel, but the Morax don't actually have to be there in the actual plot as a whole. You can convey the facts that innocent women were hunted and killed by showing that innocent women were being hunted and killed. We can explore this with King James a bit more, like, show his fear of witches rather than just going like, oh I am Satan's foe. You can keep that, but, but add more, add more drama to it because I feel like his character would have been well-rounded and possibly even more well-received than he already was if he was more grounded as a character but also acted like a pantomime villain at times because, you know, that was actually really fun to watch. And after watching Stu Bagful's video on the Witchfinders, just... <laughs> Willa should have been in it more. The episode should have also been about how her fear of possibly being next, that that's what the episode should have been about more about. Um, we should have had more scenes about that, whether she was related to Becca or not. Because her fear would have been the exact same as all the other women around that time. Yeah, all of the stuff that I'm mentioning that could enhance the episode and make it possibly the best episode next to Rosa this season, you know, that could have filled the second act, but no, all that time had to be stolen in a third act because Alien Mud is more interesting, because, you know, it's Doctor Who, it has to have some monsters in it. Also, the Doctor being dunked on suspicion of being a witch is a brilliant idea. The scenes leading up to it were brilliant, especially the one where she had a one-on-one -on -one with King James, because that is possibly one of, if not, her best moments in my opinion, and I thought this since the episode aired. At least I enjoy the bits without the Morax now, because like, 10 minutes in when the tentacle um, was, the mud tentacle appeared, that's when I started to not enjoy the episode on first broadcast, but when I rewatched it, I was just like, everything that didn't include the Morax was actually really enjoyable. Right now I've had my piece on the Witchfinders, let's move on. I also stand by the fact that Rosa wouldn't have worked if Krasko wasn't in it. Because without Krasko, where is this plot? <laughs> I mean, try coming up with a plot for Rosa without Krasko in it. 
I dare you. Go on. I'll wait. Yeah, it's pretty difficult, isn't it? Yeah, a few scenes would still be there, such as Ryan being punched in the face because he is a black man. But the, the thing as a whole wouldn't have worked without Crasco, because how can you revolve a plot around Rosa Parks without having something trying to stop her important moment in the civil rights movement? Another reason why Crasco was a benefit to the episode, although this reason might be a bit weak, um, is that his existence also sh cemented the fact that racism didn't just end when Rosa refused to stand up in that bus, and it probably will never end. Granted, that's only because he's a racist, and to be honest, that's not the thing that cemented that the most in that episode. It was more Ryan and Yaz's scene where they was talking about racism that I encountered in modern day. And Carrasco's character was very two-dimensional because literally his whole character was, I dislike black people. But as I said, he served a function within the episode. And as much as it would be really good if Rosa was a pure historical, where we focused more on the dangers of 1950s America, it wouldn't have really worked without Crasco. And that's all I have to say, really. So, what do you think of pure historicals? Do you want them back? Do you think some episodes would have worked better with, without the pseudo-historical elements? And also, what do you think of the video? Leave all of these opinions down in the comment section below. I would love to read them. For now, I shall wish you a good day. Uh, remember to like, uh, comment, subscribe, and share the video. It will help us out a lot. And I shall see you in the next video. Take care now.